How's it going chaps? How are you all doing today? Hope you're all well. This is the fourth video in the um, my little series on weathering. And uh, before I get into it, I just want to have a little reasoning as to why I'm doing this uh, this little series of videos. I've been asked a number of times on uh, people, how do I get certain effects and this, that and the other. Because I don't use very many products. Most of the stuff I use myself, I... I, I I make my own, um, a lot of my own bits and pieces that I, I use and I don't go through all the mad steps that people tell you, you got to go through this to get this effect and that effect and the other effect. Um, if you want to go down the lines of, you know, streaking and all that kind of thing, then off you go. There's plenty of videos out there. I don't use it myself. This couple of videos that I'm doing are on how I do it, okay? Not on how you have to do it. This is how I do it, because I've been asked on how I do it, okay? So I've decided to kind of extend it a little bit to a certain degree, and we'll start off anyway with first, you know, this is the stage we've got to at the moment. Uh, we've, yeah, here we are, there's the camera. Don't put it up in front of the camera. We have our, um, our little pens or two. We have it, uh, dull coated now at this stage so we've been through the chipping um, we've given it a wash an enamel wash is what, is what I use uh, with the decals done with the decals kind of damaged up a bit uh, in this video I'm going to uh, just a couple of little bit more highlights well highlight a few areas a little bit more using a certain product yes a product I do use products and um, Another thing then is I'm going to use some pastels for some dust effects. Okay, so that's what's going to do in this video. Um, over the next couple of videos, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some figures for it, and I'm going to make it into a dial. So I'm going to show you everything that I do in the making of the dial, the figures. I'm not going to go into making figures. You know what I mean? Everybody knows how to get to that stage. I'm not going to go to the little finicky things with that. Um, two figures that I have already uh, assembled. I have a little um, little American soldier here. Okay. He came with the Walker Bulldog kit. And also, that comes with the Panzer II kit is you get some figures with that set. It's a lovely set. It's only, you get it for about 10 euro. 10 quid. You pick it up anywhere very very cheap and that's why I decided to use this one because if you want to uh, I mean a lot of people be making models for quite a long time are afraid to actually go into the weathering process and you know ruin their lovely models that they've spent ages on and they're saying right well oh, I don't really want to you know go and destroying it so what you do is you buy yourself a cheap kit you build it as proper and then you can practice your weathering skills on it and things like that and by using a cheap kit you're not going to waste anything and even if you destroy it who cares it's only a couple of quid right with this kit with the uh, little pounds or two you get some figures with it and like I said I'm doing this in the American one and what I've done is if you can see that I've stuck an American tanker's head on the uh, figure that sits into the, the uh, commander's hatch now what I've done with that is I've used my little Dremel now I don't know whether we can get in to see that or not. Where did that comes in? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Sort yourself out. Yeah. Fucker, yeah. Alright. When this eventually um zooms in to your man, what I wanted to show what I want to try and, and show you is that I've uh used my Dremel and I've scraped off basically, I used a little sort of a grinding bit in the drum and I've scraped off any of the uniform detail that was on this chap, he had sort of two breast pockets the little um, iron cross, well not the iron cross but the, the eagle em embossed on it and buttons down the front right? and so what I'm doing is I'm copying sort of an American tanker's uniform with it but they just got the sort of the zip up jacket so all I did was I I used the drum and I scooped off the uh, the pockets made the collar down and things like that so stuck a German, an American tanker's head in him 
and he's ready to go. So he fits into the, the uh, into the torch quite nicely. I'm also going to use um, the little Harley Davidson that I made there some time ago. If you go back to some of my videos, it's, uh, I made one of the little, uh, I think it's an Atelier kit, is it? Yes, it's an Atelier kit, and um, I made a little Harry Davidson chap. So he's going to be on it. So I'm going to do a little crossroad style with it. And you mean, for that, I'll be using, for the base, I'll be using this. This is exactly how they come, okay? I buy them from, uh, it's called deals in Ireland, it's Poundland in England and I'm sure in America you've got your dollar stores and things like that and you get basically the same thing. What it is, it's a little kid's uh, blackboard. Cheap as chips, uh, it comes with a sponge and some chalk. You can give this chalk to the kids. Sponge is handy for sponge uh, chipping. I'm not doing it in this video. I'll do it in another video at some other stage. Although, actually I might, I might just do a little bit in this video, just to show it. And, um, because it'll be done with this process. And, uh, we'll be making this into the base, and how I prepare this and get everything ready. And I use a lot of that stuff, das clay, which is handy. So I'll be doing that, it'll be done for the base of it. So, let's get on with this video. And we'll be doing highlighting some um, some of the hatches and some of the uh, some of the protrusions, protrusions, some of the little uh, hinges and things like that. I just it's just an extra little touch that I give to them, just to make them uh, a little bit nicer. And I'll be doing some uh, pastel work, and uh, we'll do a bit of sponging as well. Why not? Okay, so we get onto the bench and we'll start on that. Right chaps, we're down at the bench and uh, let's go on with the next step. This is what I use. What I'll be using for this step is Citadel's Shade Null Oil, N-U-L-N Oil, right? And what I do with that is, you also need a very size, I suppose size one, I think. I use the cheapest chips, uh, pound shop nail art brushes I find them f absolutely fabulous they don't last as long as the uh, Windsor and Newtons and things like that but um, when you have a habit of like me of not really looking after your, <laughs> your brushes and sort of doing a bit and forgetting it and then putting it down so I use toothpick I find it very handy to stick in there that kind of keeps the lid open a bit okay <laughs> no other reason for it all right so what we do is we get a little bit what I do should I say not what we do just a little bit of oil on the tip of your brush now we we'll start here see on these these hinges here and just put a bit of oil on the hinges I'll soak it in. It kind of darkens up the hinge a bit as well, makes it stand out. I know it's quite dark at the moment, but it does it does fade in. Okay, and also do it on there's little lifting hooks or whatever they are here on the side. and things so anything this tiny little pieces like that that are raised I do it on that hinges are here in the front so I'll continue on with that I'll get back to you when I finish and I show you all the little bits and pieces that I've done on that. Right, we've just done them, so we close that. Be sure it don't spill. Put a brush there. Remind myself to wash it down in a minute. No, like I said, I don't know how this is going to show to you, but we try and zoom in. A few little creaks, sometimes this thing creaks. 
it just brought them out another tiny little bit like I said remember it's all the little subtle bits and pieces that make uh, these little things stand out okay also put a bit of the null oil on the decals just darkens them up makes them look a bit dirty rather than you know just plastered with mud which some people try to do and it's just it's just a bit too much a bit too dramatic all right as you see there are some of the areas it hasn't quite dried in yet all right uh, like all the raised detail anything that's raised the small raised detail not anything big you know all the little bolts and nuts all the uh, the hinges um, mostly just bolts things like that the leaf springs here just an extra little bit I know we've put in the black wash which brought them out and this is just a further little touch same with all the uh, the nut and bolt detail on the wheels same idea on that and the same on our turret on the hatches there just on the uh, the hinges there for the uh, the box at the back dirted up the decal a bit there and there a little bit on that hatch you no know, little bits of raised detail there isn't so much on this turret which is uh, which is grand but as you can imagine use with a bigger vehicle you have a lot more to do and this is just why I picked this one because it's nice and handy to work on right for our next step pastels you need a little container and this is what I use I bought this set I think it cost me about three quid for the set okay so I'll just bring I'll just bring the camera back here where I can work on the old light up a bit right this set cost me about I think it was about three quid and I bought it about a, just over a year ago <coughs> and most of the colors I don't use but they're there as you can see from the colors I do use I use kind of a an earthy reddish brown and I use grey okay these are some other ones that I've got there uh, a set of round ones but we'll, we'll use these ones we'll use the we'll use the square ones we'll use the, the dark brown and the grey okay so we're using kind of an earthy brown colour and grey what we do for this is we get our hobby knife Put that down. And we scrape off some uh, pastel dust. Now the pa type of pastels to get you want to get are chalk pastels. Okay. Chalk pastels. Pastel chalks. Chalky pastels, whatever you want to call them. So we have a bit of our brown and we have a bit of grey. As you see the grey seems a bit softer. Right, so we got our brown and our grey. Now that's I'm using that for European. If I was going for say a desert scene, I'd use say a sandy colour. You can use whatever you want really. Uh, colours are totally up to you. And for that then, I put it on with a stubby-ish brush. One that's gone, you know, it's gone past his prime. You're not going to use that for painting. We've all got brushes that kind of turn up at the end, so we've now got a use for these little brushes that we've uh, that we've destroyed with our uh, enamel paints and our acrylic paints, which are quite uh, quite nasty to the brushes, right? So we have our little pastel powder mix made up. We'll also need a softish brush. For, for brushing off any of the excess right so what we do with this is it's quite simple we just put a bit on our brush and we rub it in paying more emphasis on the joins but the whole area has to get it if you don't just do if you don't do the whole area and just say do where the the creases are and you know the, the detail is and just say do around the detail what happens is and what I find that happens is that 
it leaves a kind of a marking around it makes it look too uh, too fake shall we say so we'll just do this uh, this front cover show you how it turns out and then we'll go, I'll go back and I'll uh, pause that do the whole lot and we'll go back and we'll have a look at it then for a finish right so we get our dust on like that like I said now do it over your thing because waste not want that give it a brushing off remove our excess and there's our final result now unfortunately the camera isn't helping me in any way shape or form but uh, if you see what it does is it, it kind of I don't know how you'd put it the dust gets into areas that you can't really get it fully out of if you know what I mean it, it gets trapped in, in certain little pockets and it also tones down the wash you know, you're getting the effect of the wash but it kind of uh, I don't know, it tones it down and it gives a kind of an overall dusty look to it okay I'll continue on with this and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see it then at a much much easier okay right now I have the hole done and as you can see the difference okay I, that's why I sort of stopped there's the hole done that's dusted up okay now I know the light isn't the best and all that but you can see the difference from where we were the second I put on the turret see the turret isn't done but the rest of it is and you can see there that it's got that dusty look about it oh God, no, if I just turn off that light wait for these lights to adjust themselves it might work a little bit better hopefully that will be a little bit better for you okay you can see the dust in around the thing it's lightened it all off again like I said don't worry about darkening darkening it too much with the with the washes and things because the next couple of step, steps will lighten it off which is one of the reasons why I do give it a dark wash because if you don't it'll end up too too light okay so as you see now I have the turret to do that's just a little thing I stuck in there so the, uh, the figure can sit into it so I'll continue on now and I'll get the turret done and the wheels and the uh, drive sprockets and things okay and then we can fit our wheels the last step then will be the tracks okay so we're almost finished I decided not to go ahead with the sponge ch uh, chipping for this one because it's a total different effect seeing as we've done the hairspray chipping method I won't do the uh, the sponge one which is a kind of a an added on as opposed to a taking off one I'll do it as a separate uh, a separate little tutorial -y type thingy but most of you know that one anyway so I'll continue on with that I'll get more done on that and we'll have a look at it for a finish okay where's me mouse gun there we go so I'll just pause this finish off the turret finish the wheels and then we'll have a look back at it again then okay now that's so there we are our panzer tool is all dusted up so all we've got left to do now is the tracks which will be our last video and the uh, the weathering part of it anyway and uh, as you can see it looks nice and dusty the dust has got into the areas it's not overly dusty but you don't want it to be over dusty because remember it's going to be blown off by wind and this that and the other it only kind of gathers in certain little areas that uh, you know like in the corners little things like that that's where it will all gather and things the rest of it will just look weathered which is what the scraping in of the dust does it gives it a nice weathered effect which is the whole thing we're doing we're weathering okay so as you can see there she is and I am quite happy so far with how that is turning out okay as you can see we've got our uh, little pens or two there we go steady up that little bit closer there there are little pens or two all nicely weathered 
Okay. Okay, there she is. And that's the effects that we're after getting with all those little bits and pieces. Now in the last uh, video, as I said, we'll be putting uh, doing the tracks. And the last little touches, there's one more little touch to be done to this and uh, for that we'll be using graphite pencils and um, that will be the last of it then so that will be in the next video so that's it for this video lads uh, don't forget to like and subscribe subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed and don't forget to give it the old thumbs up give it a like please do give it a like because uh, I like it if, if you like it obviously I'm not telling you to just but please please give it a like if you like it Give it the old thumbs up, give it the like, and get an indication as to how this thing is going. And um, like I said, I'll be doing further videos on this little Panzer too. We'll be making it into a little dial and uh, going a little bit further with it. So, let's leave it at that, lads. I'll catch you up in the next one. Until then, stay safe, enjoy your modelling, and don't forget, go out and buy yourself a kit. Build it and enjoy it. Catch you in the next one, guys.